Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got an unboxing for you. We're going to be unboxing this pen here. This is by Hong Dian and it's the N7. It's a piston filling pen. I've been keeping an eye on this for a while. I keep looking at it. It's been in my basket, then out of my basket. So finally, I pulled the trigger and I bought it. So join me now down on the mat. Let's take a look at this pen. Let's look at the ink I'm going to put in it, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. So here we are down on the mat. The pen it comes in this little plastic wrapper. Let me just take that off so we can actually look at the pen itself. It was really well wrapped with bubble wrap, so in terms of packaging, really pleased with it. Let's take a look at the pen itself. This starts at the top here and there we've got this gorgeous looking plastic i want to say it's a greeny blue i know not very descriptive is it looks quite nice though that comes down and we've got this gold colored clip the clip itself yeah, it's fairly springy it's not too difficult to start working it if we look at the cap the cap it tapers out until it gets to the bottom of the clip. Now the cap's in this gorgeous, it's a like a blue colour, but we've got this decorative here. This is, I think they're meant to be peacock feathers. Around the back here, we've got a peacock. Then we've got the words peacock. You know, letting you know it's peacock as if that hasn't already given you enough hints. And then it looks like Quan Jan. At the bottom of the cap, we've got a gold band. Again, in here we've got some writing. It's LT, Hong Dian. Then around the back, underneath the peacock, we've got N7. From the cap, there's a very short drop down. You can hardly feel it. I mean, it is there, but it's been done quite well. Then we come into the main body. The main body, just look at this gorgeous colour. I'm just going to slowly turn this round. I'm going to try and angle it as I'm doing so, so you can hopefully get the full effect on this over the camera. This looks really nice. So we seem to be the same width until about two thirds of the way down. Then we taper down to these two gold coloured rings. This is what separates the piston knob from the body. That piston knob, it's the same colour as what I saw on the cap. And then if we twist that, just to show it opening. So that opens up and then we can close back down the piston. Let's take off the cap. So it comes off in half, one, about a little bit under one turn, which is absolutely really good. I love that. Let's take a look at what we've got inside. So we've got this nib. Now this is primarily, it's a gold color, but then at the top, we've got this silver color. We'll take a closer look at it. So I, I really like this decoration. I like to see two ton nibs and this is unusual. So we've got there the breather hole. Underneath that, we've got, it looks like a picture of a pergola. And at the bottom, we've got Hong Dian. To the left of Hong Dian, we've got F for fine, because this is a fine nibbed pen. This is one of my, well, not quibbles, but one of the things that I'd like to see improved with Chinese pens, they only seem to do mainly extra fine or fine and the occasional bent nib. I'd love to see them doing something like a broad nib. Even a medium's nice. So from the nib, we come into the section. The section to me looks fairly straight. There may be a little bit of a concaveness to it, but that's hard to say. Then we come to three threads. So that's where the cap goes on. And one of the things that's nice to see here, we've got an ink window there. So we'll be able to see our ink once it's in there. We'll know our ink level. Now let's work this converter. There we go. The plunge is coming all the way down. So when the plunge is down, it does go right the way past the ink window. Hopefully that means we'll be able to get a really nice fill off this. And then again, we'll work that back up. That's nice and smooth. That flows really nicely. All in all, quite a pretty pen. Now, I paid 45 Australian dollars for it. I think it's worth it by the look of it so far, because it's pretty enough, isn't it? Just going to change it for my pen rest, and 
we'll take a look at some size comparisons. The first two pens we're going to take a look at, they're standard ones I use in all my videos. We've got the Pilot Metropolitan and we've got the Lamy Safari. In terms of size, with that cap on, it's slightly shorter than both of these, so it's not a long pen. Let's take the caps off and see what it looks like. Here, what I've tried to do is line the bottom of the sections up. So with that lined up, that Hondian, it looks really small, doesn't it? It'll be interesting to see what it's like when I've got it in my hand when I'm writing. The nib, let me look at the nib. So we've got, yeah, I think it's number six size nib on this Hondian N7, whereas the Safari there, and we've got that small number five size nib there on the Metropolitan. I'm going to just post them to see if it posts. Posted, it seems to post quite nicely. We'll take a look at that when I'm doing my writing. About the same size as the Metropolitan, but definitely we can see it's shorter than what we've got there with the Safari. I'm going to swap over the pens and I'm going to fetch in another two to compare against this. The two pens I've just brought in, I brought in the Twisby Eco. That cost me 44 Australian dollars. I've also brought in a Pen BBS 487. That was 54 Australian dollars. And this Hondian N7, that was 45 Australian dollars. So these are pens that are in roughly the same price range. Look at the size difference. When they're posted, that N7 does half look like the baby of the group. The other two, they're roughly the same size. Let me unpost these now. Unposted, again, that Hongdian, definitely shorter. The Eco beats out by a lot, and the Pen BBS 487, well, just by a little bit. If we look at the nibs, though, we've got this Hongdian. That's got that two-tone colour, which we took a look at earlier. We've got the silver colour of both the Hongdian and the Twisby. To me, that two-tone, it just fetched some interest to the pen. And along with the gorgeous colourings, I think it looks so nice. I'll just pop the caps back on, and we'll take a look at them with the caps on. So here we are with the cap on, again the N7, it looks a lot smaller. So this is not a big pen, it's a small pen. As I say, we need to look when I'm writing because I do sometimes struggle with small pens. I'm going to step away from the desk and I'm going to give the pen a clean out. When we come back, we'll take a look at the ink, fill the pen, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. Here I am back. The ink that I'm going to use today, well, I was trying to find an ink with a close match to the colour. And what I've decided to go for is by Diamine, and it's Yuletide, and it's from the 2021 ink event calendar. I think when I fetch the pen in, yeah, I think we've got quite a good match there. Certainly where the ink's laid on thicker, it matches the darker turns. Although when I look at the cap, that's more green than blue now. So that's going to be interesting to see how it looks with that blue ink. Let's fetch the ink bottle in, just giving it a shake. There we go, Yuletide. This is a standard ink, so it should just be a nice, gorgeous colour. There's no sheen in, there's no shimmer. Right, we'll work it down. There's the plunger right down at the bottom. Now this is going to be where it's interesting. Will the pen fit in the bottle? Yes, it does. So I'm able to slot that in and then fetch that plunger up and hopefully we'll get some ink. Well, not a lot. We have got a little bit. I'm going to try that again. But this time to fill it, I'm going to try putting it on the side, hopefully without ink going everywhere we go. Yeah, that's a slightly better fill. Why I've had to do that, this is such a small bottle of ink that the nib hardly goes into it. So I need to fill it a couple of times just to get ink going. I've just cleaned off the nib and put the lid back on for a second. Let's get this ink out of the way before it ends up going everywhere. Just going to fetch in my trusty notepad of testing. This notepad is by Black and Red and it uses the Oxford optic paper. So it's really nice fountain pen friendly paper. Let's do some writing. So unposted, 
it really is just the teeniest little bit too sharp for me. I think I'm going to have to use this posted. Let's pop the cap on. It does purse quite nicely and it doesn't feel overly back heavy. There's a little bit of weight at the back, but I think I'm feeling that because normally I don't use my pens posted. So it's just a case of getting used to that unusual feeling. Let's write. So we have here a Hong Dian N7. With Hong Dian, I don't know why my brain keeps telling me it's two words, but it's not. It's just the one word. The nib on here is fine. You can see that. It's quite a fine line. It cost me 45 44 my brain's going dead today 45 australian dollars the ink by diamine and yuletide that does look quite a nice match doesn't it so as the ink's going down it's really picking out the colors in that body and now i'm seeing it on paper it's not too different than what I'm seeing with the colours of the cap as well. Let's look at drying times. Immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Finally, one minute. After a minute, we've still got the tiniest bit of smudge coming off. So as a combo, given this is a fine nib, this looks fairly wet. I'm going to move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen writing. That feels quite smooth. There's a definite pencil-like noise coming off it, so you can hear the pen writing. I hope that came over on the mic, but it's smooth. There's no roughness to it. It's pleasant. It's, again, not gliding over the paper. There's that tactile feel to it. You can feel that it's moving over the paper. It's not like writing on glass. It's just nice. There's no catchiness to it. One of the issues I've got with my Twisby Fine, that feels like it catches on the paper at times. This one didn't. Let's see if there's any line variation. So we start these first three lines, and then that was no pressure. Next three lines, I'm adding pressure. I wouldn't say it's much wider. I'm doing my S's again, not seeing anything in the way of line variation. This nib feels very, very stiff. I'm now going to do my scribble test. This is to really see what the ink flow is like. So can I get all the way off the page without it drying up? Yes, I can. I do this test because I'm personally not a fast writer. If I tried fast writing, well, you wouldn't be able to read a thing. So it's the nearest I can get to it. So what are my first impressions of this pen? The pen looks nice. It's really interesting to look at. The colours here, they really draw the eye. Personally, I don't like all this decoration on the cap. To me, it's just over bling. If it was the same material as the body, I think that would look so much nicer. But that's that's very much a personal preference. Since ordering this, I did see there's a grey version. I maybe need to get that to see what that looks like as well, because I think that looks nicer. But again, that's a very personal point of view. The line is definitely a fine. You can see here we've got no real width. There's no line variation. It gives you that nice, consistent, fine line. Writing experience... For me, I did do some unposted. It just feels a little bit short. I may try and get used to it because it's not short enough that's going to cause me issues, but it will post. 
Posted feels slightly back heavy, but again, not enough to put me off. The ink flow keeps up. I actually like the color of this ink. I think that's a good match between the color and the of the ink and the color of the pen. I'm glad I got this pen. I've got a number of Hongdian pens now. I like that it's a piston filler. All the other Hongdian pens I've got, they're all cartridge converters. I do like piston fillers. I love the fact it's got this ink window. Now, yes, this time I couldn't get as much ink in there as I'd like. That wasn't to do with the pen. That was to do with the bottle I was filling it from. All in all, for $45, I think this is a nice pen. It's certainly up there and battling it out with the Twisby Ecos that I already have. I just wish that there was a better nib choice. What I'll do when this is empty is I'll actually look at this because it seems to be a number six nib. So I'm going to see if I can pull that, then put in a medium nib. I do have a couple of Pen Chalet medium Yoho nibs, so I might try one of those in there. Or I may even try the Kaigaloo long knife. But until I try and pull the nib, I don't know how easy or if how possible that's going to be. So this is my first impressions of the Hondian N7. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think about this pen? How about the ink I've put in it? Are there any inks that you could suggest that might be worth me trying? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.